All right. Yeah, so this is the agenda today. We'll, as I more or less summarized earlier, we'll give a bit of background on the um, uh, political circumstances. We'll dive further into depth on what exactly tax PI is, its uh, use in analyzing um, government decision making, fiscal policy, impacts on you know the broader um, US economy as well as on the state and local level, some of the mythology methodology behind uh, tax PI, what is actually in the bill itself, and uh, then we'll go into a live demo. Uh, after that, uh, we'll draw some <clears throat> brief conclusions, and uh, you can feel free to ask us any questions that may pop up between now and then. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Austin. Uh, thank you, Carson. Um, can everybody hear me before I begin? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Um, well, to begin, we're going to talk about the background um, on stimulus um, as COVID-19 pandemic and its collective effects continue to loom large in everyone's minds. Uh, the US government has taken its first steps towards vaccinating the population, um, but many months remain until uh, normal economic activity can commence. Um, so to compound to compound this, Congress late last month approved a second stimulus bill hovering around 900 billion um, that focuses primarily on stimulus checks, small business aid, with an exclusion to publicly traded companies, as well as COVID-19 recovery um, efforts. It, uh, it also could be laying the groundwork for further stimulus as, uh, as the year and our recovery progress. Um, the reason that this stimulus is important is because many states find themselves in dire straits uh, regarding the finances, their finances with the stimulus, providing a increase to taxable economic activity. Um, and it's interesting to note that the Democrats will now hold the House Senate and White House, um, which will, um, you know, change the, the dynamics in the coming year. So next slide. Um, so to begin, Remy's tax PI software answers the what if questions about the dynamic effects, the dynamic economic and fiscal effects of policies. Um, tax PI builds off of the PI plus model, uh, which is our base model by trying to, by tying the fiscal side of things to the economics. Uh, you get the outputs available in PI Plus, but additionally, the model is customized to a to a state or, or city's particular tax structure to see how revenues by sources such as income tax or sales tax or corporate profits tax, et cetera, and expenditures by categories such as education or healthcare or public safety or public services can change. Um, this aspect makes tax PI good for forecasting tax changes, fiscal budgets, and education and infrastructure spending. Um, further, it draws on the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BEA, the Census, and the ACS as places um, to derive its data for the model. Um, next slide. So, uh, generally, we're frequently used when there's a particular high visibility, high impact policy under consideration because our models come out of the box with a more comprehensive economic modeling framework than static models and because they are easier to use and maintain than custom builds. Um, so as you can see on the map, Remy has worked with states all across the nation on a variety of different policies and projects. Um, beginning in the Northwest, tax PI was used to analyze an aerospace tax credit in Washington state. Uh, down South in Texas, it was used uh, to analyze the statutory impact requirement for appropriations legislation, while in the neighboring state of Arkansas, uh, it was used to evaluate the Big River Steel Manufacturing Facility. Um, so as you can see by these just three, these three examples, uh, these unique examples, the application is robust um, and it can really handle a lot of different uh, analysis. Um, moving over to the East Coast in North Carolina, it was used to analyze a policy regarding Medicaid expansion. Um, and then further up the coast in Maryland, uh, tax PI was used to analyze corporate tax rate reduction and then lastly, in the Midwest, it was used to evaluate Ohio's historic preservation tax credit, tax credit program study. And uh, to close this slide, if you're interested in learning more about these studies, we can surely provide access and discussion after the webinar. Um, so uh, next slide. And so um, recession impact on the fiscal balance sheet. So now we're kind of getting into state and local governments and stimulus and um, the, the effects of those mingling. So when a recession hits, it affects both sides of the fiscal balance sheet. 
first, recessions, recessions come with more unemployment and less spending, and uh, these are going to affect government tax revenue from in, income tax or sales tax. Um, this has been a theme uh, since this pandemic began. Um, but additionally, governments will also be increasing spending, for example, toward Medicaid or unemployment insurance. And uh, as we move forward in the, in the PowerPoint, um, Tobias will begin to touch on that. So this fiscal balance is a double-edged sword. Um, so we have less revenue, but we have higher spending. And this is the fundamental problem that states and local governments face during a recession. How do you, how do you balance this? And when we think about the potential impact of COVID-19 on state revenues, we can think of state sales taxes and also state in individual income taxes. These are two large part of the state revenue and have decreased significantly as unemployment increases and the spending decreases. Um, so with that set up, I would uh, like to turn it over to Tobias uh, and he will begin to talk about the methodology and assumptions uh, for the uh, tax PI demo that he will be doing. So Tobias. Thank you, Austin. So there are endless ways that you can model the particulars of December's relief package. Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to take the broad chunks of what that money is and model it in uh, one state, in this case, Louisiana, and see how that influx of money plays out for uh, the state's economy and the state's finances. So we have our baseline. Um, ordinarily, Remy puts out annual base annual forecast updates, uh, but we, what we have seen recently is that so much can change from month to month, let alone year to year. Uh, and so we're making use of data from the Research Seminar of Quantitative Economics from the University of Michigan, as well as from the CBO uh, to generate quarterly forecast, or I'm sorry, forecast on a uh, quarterly update path rather than annual, just so that people can have a better idea of what's happening in the immediate future. Um, the changes that we're going to be doing uh, or the experiments that we're going to be doing affect both Louisiana and the rest of the nation. Uh, now, if we just looked at Louisiana in isolation, what would happen is that we would see overstated effects because we are ignoring the increase in economic activity and the uh, the jobs pull of the rest of the nation. Um, and we are also looking at a fraction of Louisiana's total budget. Um, so we're looking at the discretionary spending that comes from uh, the general fund, as well as what's the discretionary funding um, towards various government departments. And the rest is made up of like predetermined um, funding patterns, federal funding. Um, so we are going to be looking at about $9 billion total of Louisiana's $34 billion budget. This is the general path for how things work in tax PI. Um, so it starts off with user calibration. The, the core of tax PI, what, separate, what separates it from the rest of the pack is the ability to include budgets. So down to a very small level, to a very granular level, you can include different line items for different sources of revenue, different targets of expenditure, um, and tie them to different drivers and have them be different policy variables. Uh, depending on what you wish to model, depending on what your assumptions are. Uh, and then comes the build simulation. So this is the part where you get to change um, different components of tax policy to see how it affects the economy or vice versa, make broader economic shocks to the economy and see how it affects state finances. And it's that latter scenario that we'll be looking at today. And lastly, you get a wide array of results to examine. Um, there are different demographic components for migration, ethnic groups, age groups, um, economic activity, of course, um, you know, different levels of output, GDP, employment, um, and in the case of tax PI, fiscal standing, um, where you see how different revenue categories, different expenditure categories change in response. Um, and again, we do want to stress this is dynamic. This isn't a matter of static multipliers. This is a matter of different variables or different variables, different stocks changing over time in response to what's happening in the economy and having those relationships change. This is a uh, abstraction of how the model works. Uh, we, there are, as you can see, there are a number of blocks and without going through them all, we broadly sort things out into five different categories. Um, so there's uh, output and demand, uh, demand for labor and capital, population and labor supply, different market shares in the domestic and international fronts, and um, 
compensation, prices, and costs. Uh, looking at the top left, we see that state and local government spending is broadly what we want to be looking at today uh, and where that comes from. So, you know, it comes from how much population there is, um, how much output there is for generate revenue, but we're also looking at tax PI and it is important to make sure that each kind of revenue is folded into the model in an appropriate place. So a price on property taxes is going to effectively increase how much it costs to own a house. Um, same with sales taxes. It increases the sticker price or the consumer price uh, of what someone is paying for a particular good, whether it's, you know, hotel fees or, you know, an extra couple percent on sugary drinks. And same with income tax, it affects how much people income people have. Uh, and then the corporate income tax rate, we generally fold in as a production cost. Um, now, this is, this is a pretty all-encompassing, not all-encompassing, but this does cover a lot of cases for what different taxes people want. Um, but if you're looking for specific income taxes or targeting specific industries, uh, there is that flexibility as well, which we will cover in our demonstration. These are the components of the bill. Um, so divided into how much money goes to the United States, rest of the United States and how much is going, is going to be put into the model as money for Louisiana. Um, now, the bill did not come, oh, so sorry, let's go back. Uh, the bill did not come with a state-by-state -state breakdown. So all of these values are at the national level or come from national figures that are shared out between Louisiana and the rest of the nation. So there we go. Um, so we have... Uh, for individual payments, we looked at different income distributions, what percent of the United States versus what percent of Louisiana makes under $75,000 a year. Um, note that this does omit the decreasing payments for people who make over $75,000 a year. So what we get here will be, in that sense, a conservative estimate. This is just what everyone who gets the 600 is getting. Um, we also have extended unemployment benefits. These are based on November Bureau of Labor Statistics data. Uh, job claims. Just one moment. There we go. Um, we also have, you know, how much is going to schools, whether that be um, K through 12 education or colleges and universities, and those are divvied out based on national and Louisianian uh, enrollment figures for K through 12 and for colleges. Uh, a lot of these, the rest of them, broadly, we divide by population, uh, just assuming equal, you know, per capita spending would be the same across the country. Um, obviously, that's not correct. There will be some vaccine distribution that goes to harder hit areas, same with test and trace. Um, but as a, as a naive assumption, um, this, is, this is what we're working with. Uh, the one exception to that is the um, Paycheck Protection Program. And that we just divided by uh, the size of the workforce between the United States and Louisiana in November of 2020, pure, per the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, as that money is meant to ensure that workers can keep making money. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so now we're gonna get to the demonstration. I'm gonna abandon the PowerPoint for a little bit and walk you through uh, first a broad overview of how general modeling works within Tax PI, uh, and then we'll get into the particulars of this case study. So this is what greets you upon opening a, um, one moment, just minimizing this interface. There we go. Um, this is what greets you upon opening uh, a Remy product, nice clean tile-based interface. Uh, what I would like to stress is that we take at Remy what I we like to call a top-down, bottom-up approach. So what happens at the regional level is informed by national circumstances. Um, so we'll take a look at the national forecast. Uh, again, this is the November forecast courtesy of the uh, RSQE as well as the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, and we can definitely see, looking at the nation, this is definitely a forecast that was made during COVID. So if we take a look at um, total employment, we can see that there's a plateau, a dip by 2021. Um, same with the um, non-farm employment, labor force plateaus slightly, but we can see the population broadly staying steady. And then if we look at the regional forecast, so this is just the derivative essentially of what's happening at the national level, we can see it play out broadly the same. Um, we make use of 
census tract level data to inform what is happening um, at the state level. So if we take a look at employment and population, we can see broadly the same. So um, bringing up that legend again, we can see that employment again takes that dip, whether it's total employment or just private non-farm, uh, the labor force plateaus a little bit, uh, but we can also see that there is a more visible dip in population for Louisiana than there is for the rest of the nation. Um, and again, this depends on a wide variety of factors, um, the over-representation or under-representation of different industries, the right mixture of uh, capital and labor, general salaries, uh, and so we strive to tailor fit the specifics of each region in such a way that it accurately reflects what's happening um, from national inputs. Um, of course, if you wanted to, there is the bottom up half um, where there is a high degree of flexibility of what you can customize at the regional level. Um, and so this is a matter if what's happening at the national level does not take into account what's happening at the regional level, there is the opportunity to amend that in some fashion so you know if you're in michigan or if you're a town in michigan and there is an auto plant opening up that's not necessary that's going to be a big impact on the local economy but it's not something that people uh, generating national forecasts are going to take into account um, so there is room to update population employment um, as well as a host of other variables to make sure that you have the correct specifications for the regional level The beating heart of tax PI is these, um, are these budgets. And as I said earlier, each one of these budgets is, the ability, is a compilation of collected revenues and collected expenditures. So we'll just take a look at the full budget here. Um, so what's happening now is that we can see here are all the sources of revenue um, for the state followed by all the expenditures, all the different government departments, all the services that the state government provides. And each one of these is tied to a, um, a driver or an indicator and then folds back into the model as a policy variable. So we'll take a look at gaining revenues. Um, so this is, you know, a, as the name would suggest, this is how much people are this is based on how much people are paying for gambling services and how much people are actually you know, buying the lottery tickets, um, spending money at casinos, that sort of thing. And so you could, you could, you know, you could proxy that in certain ways. You could say, oh, maybe it's just a function of income. Um, maybe it's, you know, a function of wages or a function of output in a particular industry. Um, but we're, we've taken the direct approach here. And so the only thing that is going to change this particular line item is how much people are spending on gambling. Um, so these two are going to grow, or these two items are going to grow together, how much people are spending on gambling as well as how much money the government makes. Um, and then policy variable, well, that has to, it has to, a change in the amount of revenue collected has to affect the model somewhere. And so likewise, it affects the price. Um, so if you raise the tax of a particular good, you're raising the price of it. And so you're going to decrease how much people want uh, given that price. And that's true for all of these. You can, you can have them be very narrowly targeted. So we have a, a corporate income tax that broadly applies to um, all industries within the state, but you could also customize it to just be a small fraction of those. And then likewise, you have expenditures. Um, so a number of these I've decided to just tie to population. Uh, assuming that you want to keep a consistent level of service with per capita spending. Um, so if we take a look at youth services, for instance, we can see that the indicator here is the population that is under 17, the juvenile population. So that's what's going to cause this level of government spending to grow. Um, and then policy variable, it comes back in as additional government spending. Um, now, there are a couple of different ways to do this. So you could have it be different targets um, or different drivers, um, but there is also the feature to have it be a matter of um, a balanced budget. So we have the option to balance your budgets and have expenditures driven by revenue, by how much money is available, rather than what demand is. Uh, and so that's helpful for states that want to see what, 
will it take? What changes do we need to make in order to get a balanced budget? Maybe because of a constitutional um, requirement, um, maybe maybe some other some other requirement. But just to see how do we get from A to B? Remy gives uh, Remy and Tax BI gives you a um, an option to not see where that not just see where that path goes, but to test out the effects. We'll just save that. So let's take a look at the inputs really quick for our supposed stimulus. Um, and actually, let's let's do one better. Um, just to show off the full list of variables that you can tweak as policy variables, these are all the things that you can change um, and to in your simulation just to see what happens. So different levels of tourism. Um, different costs of fuel, how much like people are moving in and out, birth rates, death rates. Um, there is just a large degree of customization that is possible in order to simulate what you're looking for. In this case, I'm not going to go through all of these, but we've done things like by increasing transfer payments. We've, for K through 12, we've increased output in uh, educational services. You know, SNAP gets its own slot, um, and so like each one of these categories has different effects uh, that we've measured over the course of our time researching uh, and developing and refining uh, this software, these parameters. And so here's, you know, and again, as you can see, again, we've we've carefully delineated the money to be some of the money is going to Louisiana and some of the money is going to the rest of the region. Um, so we've kind of covered like how to model this. Now it's time to go through the effects. Uh, and so I'm just going to tell a story of how this money is affecting the Louisiana economy and how that in turn affects state finances. So let's actually just set everything to be differences. Um, so what I'm going to show off are the differences in the state economy between our baseline Louisiana and our new Louisiana with the additional influx of uh relief money so the first thing it's going to do all all the extra government spending all of those extra transfer payments uh that extra income is going to translate to an increase in demand and an increase in output so we can see demand go up right along here actually let's just add that legend again um so demand is on the up and up and output is closely with it but we can also see additional imports uh, as people are spending their money outside the state and then exports um, as people from outside the state from the rest of the nation are spending money as well um, with that additional output comes additional employment uh, so these are this is measured in thousands of jobs so we can see for the duration about an increase of 200 220,000 jobs um, spread across different industries so some of this will be measured just by how big the industries are uh, like healthcare and social assistance huge industry going to see a huge increase in jobs um, and then construction likewise construction booms are also uh, very prevalent and then you can get really into the weeds so ambulatory healthcare services finance uh, Remy follows the NAICS system that's redundant NAICS codes uh, for classifying industries uh, to varying degrees of specificity so uh, it's like 20 70 and I believe 160 or so industries um, again, depending on how specific someone wants their model to be. Uh, now, some of you may have noticed in 2022, we actually see a net decrease in jobs from the baseline. Um, and that's sort of one of the dynamic effects of the model is what's happening is that in 2021, there's this influx of money, demand, spending. And what that's going to do is what's going to drive prices up. 2022, we did not add any additional years of stimulus. There's no change there. And so the money disappears, but the prices remain high. Uh, and so you're going, but you have this increased labor supply as well. And so you're going to see jobs decrease a little bit afterwards in an attempt to get back to normal. Uh, and then if you extended the model out further, you would see gradually things come back to zero. Um, now, where does that employment come from? Some of it comes from picking up the slack in the labor market. You can see unemployment decrease, but another chunk of it, or a, a smaller chunk, but still um, a cool feature, let's say, 
is changes in population. Um, so what we're looking at here is the change in net economic migrants to Louisiana. Uh, and we can, and migration is one of the cool features of our model. We get it from, or we estimate it from American, the uh, decennial census and the American Community Survey. And then it's a function of like wages and job opportunities in an area. And so we can see, well, we've increased a lot of wages, we've increased demand and employment opportunities in areas. So there's going to be an inflow of population. And then it's going to, the money's going to stop in 2022, and there's going to be a gentle outflow of population. So population goes up by about 2,000, um, you know, 180, sorry, 1,800 people. And then by the end, we can see as, as the money goes away, the population flows back out. Um, so now what's going to happen to state finances? Uh, a lot of our revenues are driven by output in various industries or, or GDP. And then a lot of our expenditures are driven by population. So let's take a look at total revenues, total expenditures. So again, these, re these represent the changes in total revenues and the changes in total expenditures for, uh, you know, for Louisiana. Uh, we can see, you know, initially that revenues go up a lot higher than expenditures. So some good news there for state budgets. But we can also see going out that the increases to revenues, the things that drive revenues, are less sticky than the things that drive expenditures. So by 2022, expended revenues have gone back pretty much to where they were beforehand. But because uh, in this particular model, we've tied a lot of the expenditures to population, population is a lot slower to move around. People take a lot more time to, in some ways, people take more time to move than capital does. And so there is a stickiness to how much the government is spending later on. Uh, and we can break this down into the component categories. Um, so here's the changes in revenue. Um, right off the bat, I want to say that the statutory dedications are uh, pre pre set aside spending or pre dedicated spending that's taken immediately from revenues. Uh, one Louisiana official compared it to a payroll tax. It's money that gets taken away before you ever see it. Um, and that I tied to GDP, so it's actually not too bad a sign to see statutory dedications be a sharp negative um, in 2021. So just to put that away, um, but then we can see how the rest of the income, uh, the state income increases. So income tax goes up a lot. Um, let's see what this one is. Gaming revenues, as we had talked about earlier, go up a fair bit. And then we can see that corporate income tax isn't actually going to go up by that much. We can see it's actually this dark blue line. It's only a little bit higher. Um, right now we're looking at as absolute differences. We can also see it in percentage change. Uh, and there we see that things are a little more equal um, with corporate income tax seeing like, or actually it was gambling. Yeah, gaming revenue is like seeing the largest percent change, even if it's, you know, a smaller absolute change. I know those different levels of scale are important, again, depending on what you want to measure. Uh, and we just want to make sure that everyone has the tools they need to get their information across in an accessible way. Um, and then we see revenues more or less go back to normal by the end. Expenditures likewise. Um, so, you know, different levels, different um, expenditures were tied to different categories here. So we can see this huge big one, yellow one at the top, this is the Department of Health. Um, we tied this into the output for health services. On the, on the belief that there was some interaction, some interplay um, between what government health offices need to spend um, and how much like output and how much output hospitals are generating. Um, and then we see you know some other requirements, Department of Education, uh, correction services, things tied to population might take a little bit longer to move. But We can also see like you, um, Department of Education tied to, similar to youth services, the percent of, or the size of the population that is eligible to attend school on the basis that you will probably spend more if you have more kids um, in school. 
we can see that one takes a lot longer to go down. Um, and so, you know, you can you at its core, like at its most basic, you could use this just as a forecasting tool. You could say, here is the economy for the next, you know, 40 or so years. Here is our budget. We given our history years, where are we going to go in the next 40 years? Um, and you could use this for that. And that would be a very good use just to say, here's here's what our budget projections look like. Um, but then you get into so much more with this. There's a degree of like what kind of policies do you want to use? Um, we can show, oh, well, here's what the economy looks like for our fiscal policies, or alternatively, here's what effect our fiscal policies will have on the economy. Uh, you can get that interplay. Um, and as we've as we've seen, there is a a lot can change very quickly. Um, and so what TextPI does and what and what Remy Software does is give you a like a consistent agile platform um, from which you can start to evaluate policy decisions, many policy decisions uh, very quickly. So you know, we I'm sure we were all glued to the news as the um, relief bill wound its way through Congress and various things got changed, various um, you know holdouts and comp holdouts gave way and compromises were made. Um, and so this is a lovely tool to be able to model those changes to quickly see what's going to happen if we do this. I see tomorrow is a completely different day. What's going to happen now?